guys good morning everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Sai Kiran so today we are going to discuss about uh, VPC and uh, some of its components okay so guys before jumping on to the VPC practicals or VPC creation of VPC directly so let me explain you a small uh, scenario based uh, thing imagine there is a very big vacant land okay there is a very big vacant land here and somewhere around you do have your own place okay let's imagine it's here so what you did is you have created um, buildings in your place okay and you have constructed two buildings and instead of tower one and tower two what you have did is uh, you have uh, named this building as um, 172.16.0.0 slash 16 and this name instead of tower two what you have named 10.0.0.0 slash 16 okay you have created a like you do have a vacant land you have a created a building so within this plot you want to construct your own flats i mean in this building imagine we do have two flats in this building also we do have two flats so instead of room room number 301 or 201 you have named this flat as 10.0.1.0 slash 24 same 10.0.2.0 slash 24 so here also so instead of naming it as room number 10 to 103 you have named it as 172.16.1.0 slash 24 and here also same 172.16.3 slash 24 so now you, you have a vacant plan you have constructed a building fine but how does people go outside people who are living inside this flat in this 10 dot flat or 16 172 dot flat how they can go outside there should be some routes right they should come out of the door they should take the lift they should come to the cellar and then uh, there should be a proper way imagine this is the route okay uh, like coming like this so it's okay you have a vacant land you have created a building and then you have uh, uh, instructed them that you have to go like this and uh, you should take lift to come down and come out like this but how they can go out there should be one gateway right if if, if there is no gateway how people can go outside and people who are coming inside how, how they can uh, come inside so let's create a gateway here people will be going in this way and people who wanted to come inside they will be coming inside but there will be a proper security here you should shh. if the security is okay with people who are coming inside and going out then he will allow or else he will not allow so let's keep the background like this guys so now i'm going to tell you imagine this is your aws infra okay and imagine inside this aws infra you do have vpc this is your land where you have constructed your building and for that vpc you have given a range which is 172.16 which is also called as cider blocks so you are telling it to construct the buildings within the track within this range 172.16 and here you do have another building for that you have created 10.0.0. range cider range and you told them to uh, take lift and come to the cellar you instructed them those are nothing but route tables and then when coming out you told them that this is the security check and you should go out and come inside like this which is called as IGW internet gateway I hope you understand what I said guys if you do not understand please put it in the comment section let me take you to the practicals um, directly so before jumping on to the practicals i'll tell you on a high level uh, what does this exactly do so in terms of security this means each organization or each company data and applications are kept separately okay 
within the range of their own VPC. So they have control over who can access their section of uh, uh, their application and data and they can set up rules and protect to keep out unwanted visitors. Now, if you ask me about the subnets, subnets are again a nothing but, uh, in my language, it's a chunk of an IP address. Chunks is again nothing but pieces of an IP address. Because here if you see, this range is big, 172.16.0.0 slash 16. Slash 16 uh, is nothing but bits, guys. If you haven't seen my yesterday IP address video, I personally request you to go watch it first and then come back because I have explained how many IPs will be there in slash 16 in subnet masking. So see, in slash 16 means you'll be having somewhere around 65,536 IPs. So if you are creating any subnet, again, subnet is nothing but your building. First you have created a site, first you had a cider block within the range, you have named it instead of tower one, you have named it as a 172 dot. So inside that only you should construct your own flat, which means inside within the train you should have your own IPs. Okay. So if you haven't seen IP addressing, go watch it. So you will definitely understand the gist of this 65,536. In real time, development servers are where developers write and test the code. They do have their own separate set of servers. Testing servers uh, are where automated tests and runs to ensure the code quality and production servers do have their own servers where the final and stable version of the software is deployed for user to access. So each subnet helps organize and manage the different stages of the software development lifecycle. Okay. Again, these route tables are something where you're going to in a cloud environment like AWS, route tables are used to control the flow of traffic between subnets or internet gateways or virtual private gateways and other network devices within the range of VPC. So what they do is they help ensure that traffic is directed efficiently and securely to its instead of the destination. Okay. So now let me take you through uh, the practical. If you didn't understand this guys, please put it in the comment section so that I can go ahead and uh, like, you know, write a separate medium post on it to uh, understand very clearly. So let me take you to see, see this is uh, the AWS console. Let's go to before showing you the VPC. Let me show you one diagram guys. The reason why I haven't draw in this session is because it is taking so much of time. So I did this before uh, coming to the session. So let me quickly explain you this. Imagine this is an, uh, we do have uh, regions and availability zones in the AWS, correct? So this is North Virginia region. Uh, North Virginia is the biggest data center because they do have six availability zones, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1A and 1F. But now I have taken only three just for our understanding. See this green line indicates so VPC. Okay, so this is VPC and I have taken the cider range of 10.35.0.0 slash 16 where it do has 65,000 IPs. So inside that VPC, within that VPC, I mean in, within that cider range, I have to create a subnets. So in a US East 1A, I kept one subnet. Uh, imagine this as app server and imagine this as a web server and imagine this as DB server. So again, in the same regions, I have created another uh, VPC where I have kept uh, three different subnets in three different regions. So the reason why I have highlighted this green and blue line is there is no communication between these VPCs. Okay. One VPC will not interact with the other VPC. In tomorrow's session, what I'm going to show is how you can make an interaction between these uh, VPCs with the help of VPC peering. Regardless of your VPC is in different region or your VPC is in different availability zone, we can still make a connection between them if it is necessary only. So how to achieve that? We can achieve that by using VPC peering. So again, this is the internet gateway where uh, if the user from this subnet wants to talk anything externally. So what will happen is we will construct some route tables. So it will automatically go like this to the internet gateway and it will go out and it will grab the information and again it will brings back and it passes the information to the user. So in later classes, we are going to attach a NAT gateway here. So we cannot uh, send the public IP directly outside. I mean, private IP directly outside. So we are going to discuss this later. But for now, you should you try to understand this uh, figure.
so let me take you back to this this is the console so if you wanted to go to the vpc what you can do is search vpc in the search bar click on vpc i can go ahead and create from here but no let's not do that let's create step by step so first what we need to create is vpc the name you can give testing i'll remove the caps lock so i can or we can give us giving it as three type and then side range as i said 10.0.0.0 slash 16 so again if you are selecting any subnets then make sure you are selecting it within this range itself only if you don't know what is this or how to overcome with this situation what you can do is just open the new tab i really don't know why my new tab is not opening let me open this open subnet calculator see here enter 10.0.0.0 and you have to give the subnet mask Basically, if you are giving 16 and if you click on calculate see how many ips were there 65534 if you have given 24 254 ips will be there so when you are creating a subnets make sure that you are giving slash 24 so that in future if any one of your teammates are uh, creating any virtual machines or anything then one of the ip from here will be assigned to it okay so for now 16 is fine this is my cider block it should always be in private it, private network only and then tenancy default yeah that's it let me create vpc once vpc is created make sure edit click on uh, edit vpc settings and then make sure you are enabling dns host names okay and then save it if you are not doing it then there will be no public access to it and then click on subnets subnets is again not a big thing you can click subnets here in the left side tab so now what you can do is you can create create subnets you have to tell for which uh, you have to select for which vpc you wanted to create the subnets i'll show you the diagram again see here this green line is our vpc now 10.0 here i have taken 35 do not confuse 0.0, .0 is also fine so 10.0.0.0 slash 16 cider block i have taken so i have to create a subnet within this range with this vpc so what i'll do now i'll select this uh, vpc three tire and then now subnet name i'll give as app servers availability zone i'll keep three subnets in three different available zones you can see i told you right north virginia is the biggest available zone see here i'll keep three subnets app servers in 1a and then 10.0.1.0 slash 16 no not 16 24 i'll be getting 254 ips north virginia create subnet and then i'll create one more subnet this is done this part is done now we'll create one more subnet three type subnet name web servers availability zone previously one subnet i kept in 1a now i'll keep it in 1b and then range is 10.0.2.0 previously i've given 1.0 right now i'm using the second one slash 24 again see here 256 ips create subnet now i am going to create a third subnet select vpc um, this i will keep as db servers 1c and then 10.0.3.0 slash 24 and then save it done right let me see so now you have created a 
right let me copy the vpc id guys so that you will be able to see exactly what were our vpcs see here are our three servers web servers app servers and db servers which were in us east 1a 1b and 1c nice okay so now we have created a vpc we have created a subnets if you come here we have created a vpc and then we have kept a subnets in it so now what we have to do we have to create a internet gateway just to allow the traffic outside and uh, vice versa so click on uh, internet gateways okay create internet gateway keep the name as IZW and then create internet gateway internet gateway has been created guys once after you have created the internet gateway what you have to do is you have to click on actions and then you have to click on attach to VPC it will be asking which VPC then you have to select your VPC attach internet gateway so by attaching what will happen is this internet gateway will acknowledge okay I have to allow the traffic of uh, this VPC okay now what you have to do you have created VPC and then you have created subnets now you have created internet gateway correct so at last what you have to do is you have to create a routing tables so go to routing select your vpc copy the vpc i'm sorry create route tables name as retire rt you should select which VPC, retire and then create route tables. Once after creating the route tables, what you have to do is you have to click on edit routes. Guys, don't do this in the real time because this is just a testing environment. So I'm doing it here. So, but when it comes to the real time, you're not supposed to allow the all traffic. Okay. So here I'm giving 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, which means it is a public IP. And then you have to select internet gateway. And then just now you have created one internet gateway right it will be here and then you have to save the changes so once it is done what you have to do is you have to click on subnet association and make sure you are selecting these servers because see in the diagram you have created an internet gateway and you have told the internet gateway that you have to access from this vpc okay but in this vpc we do have three subnets out of three which which one you wanted to allow so you have to select that right so you should click on edit subnet roles select all and save association so now the traffic has been i mean the configuration has been see these subnets will allow the traffic outside of the vpc so that's it guys we have achieved this diagram so that's all i wanted to, to explain today if you have any doubts or if you have uh, uh, anything to say please put it in the comment section also i personally request you to do the practicals if you are not doing the practicals then it will be tough for you to face the interview that's for sure um, do practicals post it on the LinkedIn post it on the medium and make sure the recruiters are watching it thank you so much for watching guys have a nice day everyone we'll see you in the next class